Hi, how are y'all doing? <laughs> hey, hey, how's it going, guys? All right, so I think we wanted to just talk about uh, a verse that Laura and I were talking about this morning, uh, Philippians 4.4. 4. Uh, it says there, uh, always rejoice in the Lord. I will say it again, always rejoice. And I think it's intriguing that Paul would use uh, the word rejoice. It's an imperative, like you're supposed to go do this. But how is it like, how does the Apostle Paul not know what a bad day is? I mean, the guy was stoned and left for dead. He was shipwrecked. Uh, he was in prison. He was beaten. So I just, I think it's interesting that him of all people would tell us to rejoice, always rejoice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the things I think that could be helpful in this particular verse is receiving it the way that it was intended to be written. Right. Um, I don't think, I really don't think that we should bust into a hospital room of someone who just died and tell the family to go rejoice. Um, I don't think if someone has cancer or if they're sick or something like that, I, I, I don't think it would be fair to bust into the room and say, Paul said to go rejoice, so go do that. I think understanding what Paul meant in that would really be helpful, and that's why I think Laura and I wanted to talk about this, that one of the things, I'll just say this, and then I'll let you, you got some, okay. Um, so if you ever go to, I know in France, in a lot of the cathedrals, if you were to look at some of the stained glass they have around, one of the things they have, it's just called the wheel of life, okay? And if you look at this stained glass, and at the very top of this wheel of life, you'll see what looks like a king. Mm -hmm. And above him, it says, I am reigning, like I'm on top of my life right now. And then on this wheel of life, this, this king is going down and things really aren't looking all that great until he gets to the bottom. He's prostrated to the earth and he's just the worst place he could be is a peasant. So he went from a king to a peasant. And then it also shows on the outer rim of this wheel of life, him going back up. And I think that picture is such a good picture of life itself. Sometimes we're on top, sometimes we're on bottom. We have great health one day, I feel strong. And then some days I'm sick. But what's interesting and really beautiful is that on these stained glass windows of this wheel of life, all of the spokes all lead to one place. In the center, it's a picture of Jesus. So that no matter where you are in life, you could always look to Jesus if you're on top of your game, if you're not doing so well. Irregardless of your situation or plot in life, you could always focus in on Jesus to give you true joy. And I think when we realize that's what Paul meant, to always rejoice if you're sick, if you're not sick, that we could look to Jesus as the place that we could, if you will, have shalom. I think of in the Bible uh, when Jesus was on the boat and the waves were crashing in. And the apostles are like, where is Jesus in all of this? What was he doing? Well, he was resting because he's the shalom. So they went to him. He was there and he calmed everything around them. He's the center point of our life, and he's our shalom. So I just think, understanding Paul's words to rejoice, I'll say it again, always rejoice, doesn't mean that you always have this overwhelming joy in your heart, that everything's perfect all the time. It's that we can always know in our heart, regardless of where we are, we always have Jesus, our shalom, our peace, our everything. Yeah. I feel like, you know, God suffered while he was here. Um, and he endured um, torture and difficulties. And the Bible doesn't talk about him losing his dad, but we do know that, um, you know, his dad wasn't in the picture later on. After the age of 12, we really don't see his father in the Bible at all. Yeah. So even Jesus had to suffer a loss of family members and friends. Lazarus died, he wept. Yeah, that scripture in John 11, I think 11, 6, says that Jesus wept. And, um, you know, in 
in suffering, we have appreciation for Jesus' sufferings because yeah. we know that he went through the same thing. And the Bible talks about that, how, um, you know, we can overcome the world because Jesus did. Yeah. And that we, um, it's, it's having that faith through that suffering, knowing that, okay, this isn't coming from God. This is coming from a fallen world um, that, yeah, God may be allowing it, but, um, you know, this isn't, this isn't what, um, how am I trying to put that? It's not coming from the Lord. It's coming from the fallen world. The ruler of this system, right. like, uh, <laughs> term, sort of, but. The ruler of this the world. The ruler of this system. Well, yeah, though, and that is a result of the fall. Heartache, yeah. suffering, death, all those things is a result of the fall. So you're right. And it's like the world around us and the things going on, the wars and Ukraine and all the things that we see as a result of being separate from God, apart think, from God. I think that if, you, if you're if you not saved, then you would probably say, um, you know, how can God do this to me? And then, it, you know, the devil attacks you in that way because you think that this is coming from God. Uh, but if you are saved, your mindset is, how can I rejoice God through this suffering? What What is... What is the lesson in the pain? Um, because yeah. there's always a lesson in something that um, you're going through. And God uses it for his glory. Amen. Yeah. You know, just like the man that was born blind, you know, they said, who sinned, his father or his mother, that he be born blind? And Jesus said um, it was for the glory of God that it might be shown through him. Yeah. Because God's the redeemer. Amen. And so that's the picture, I think, um, that we get from the Bible, that, that God's the Redeemer. He turns the beauty from the ashes, you know, or he takes the ashes and turns it into beauty, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. No, and let me just address this guy real quick. His name is Converse. He's the cause of our suffering. <laughs> he, he loves talking about the Lord, and he knew we were going to be on camera today. And, uh, he wanted to make a he cameo. Won't snuggle. He won't let me go. Oh. I'm off today. So. Mom's home today, so. I had to do some stuff, and yeah, he's right here where he wants to be. So this is Converse, y'all. Just yeah. ignore him or enjoy him, <laughs> whatever works for you. Yeah, we want you, to, <laughs> we want you to find joy. It's hard when you come out of the Watchtower, and, you know, the Watchtower teaches people, literally telling them that you're happy, you're happy, you are the happiest people on earth. When you're told those things, and yet you're, you're, you're the real you, who you are, like it militates against that. I'm not happy going to all these meetings. I'm not happy that I have to shun my daughter or my whoever. Um, I'm not happy about the blood transfusions or the CSA. Like, so what, when you know things are going on in this organization and they're telling you that you're the happiest person and you're... You're inside who you really are and what you know to be true is fighting against that. That should be reason alone to tell you that I'm not really happy. Yeah. It's um, like I believe, and this is just an opinion, but happiness like comes and goes. Mm -hmm. Like some days I'm really happy, some days really not so much. It just depends what's happening in that day. But, but you what still I have a joy in your heart. Hey, Matt, that's what I was just about to say, but I've got that joy, joy, joy down in my heart because my focus, the center of my life is Jesus. Yeah. No matter what I'm going through, I can always know that I can count on Jesus to make me feel better, to give me something to look at outside of what I'm looking at. Instead of uh, focusing on just myself, like egocentric is when you think all about yourself, you're egocentric. When you're Christ-centric, when you think about Jesus, it takes you out of the, I'm just thinking about my problems and what I'm going through, and it helps you to focus on Jesus, who is the solution mm -hmm. to all these problems. Yeah. And that's what we see in the New Testament. I love how uh, in Mark 10, when Bartimaeus is crying out to Jesus, it literally says in the text that, that Jesus is walking and he stopped. He's fine. He's falling asleep. His head is nodding. Off. Oh, you guys, you guys looking at this little guy right now? Sorry, here? he was just, it was really cute. He's your little shalom. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. 
So in the text, it literally says in Mark 10 that Jesus stopped. He was walking and stopped. And then he called to Bartimaeus. Another account, what makes it cool, is that he was walking and he stopped. And people came from the east, the west, the north, and the south. They came from all over to find Jesus. He is the center point that we go to to be healed, to, as the New Testament say, to, to be your resting place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Hebrews 12, 1 uh, and 2 says, And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus and the, uh, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. I don't know what version this is. For the joy set before him, he <laughs> when they put the pioneer in there, I'm like, okay. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus is the perfecter of our faith. Yeah, he suffered all things. he went through it, he can redeem it, and he can perfect our faith. Yeah. What's neat there is that word perfect or perfect uh, in the Greek, it literally means like he completes. He's the, he's the completion of of our mm-hmm. faith. He's everything. I love that verse. He's our all in all. Right. And that's everything. That like literally encapsulates Jesus is your everything. So yeah. to focus on that, to know that my sins are forgiven. Yeah, my everyday life may not be perfect. I may not have everything on the wheel of life. I may be on top of my game, on bottom, on my way down, or on my way back up. Irregardless, I have Jesus. And I have forgiveness of sins. I have eternal life. And most importantly, I I think for me is I have peace with God. The reason I keep focusing on like Isaiah 9, who's coming, the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. And then like Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, you have been declared righteous by faith in God's eyes because of Jesus. So I have peace with God because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's the focus. So to focus on ourselves and the things that are going on around us can be really consuming because in everyday life, we all have a lot of things that just consume us. But irregardless of where you are on the wheel of life, if you will, Jesus is the center. He should be your focus. Yeah. And uh, it's a beautiful, majestic thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, like the Bible points out, um, we learn obedience through suffering. Yes. And that does not mean that, okay, I wasn't obedient, so now God's <laughs> going to punish me. What it means is that when my car breaks down and I'm suffering and I'm wondering how in the world am I going to fix it, um, instead of me taking on all that anxiety and worry, I pray about it, I give it to God, and I tell him, look, I don't know how we're going to do this. I used to have a father that I could just call at any time and he would go right out there and within 20 minutes, my car would be fixed. My dad is a a brilliant man Yes. and now I don't have that. And so I tell God, I need you to be my father today. I need you to fix my car. I need you to help me find a way. And um, I can't tell y'all how many times he's done that. And through the brothers and sisters at um, Calvary Baptist church, even, Um, have fixed our car and you know just blessed us beyond measure yeah and so thinking about that when i when i go through these experiences of suffering because you know coming out of the watchtower you have a lot of ptsd Mm -hmm. a lot of anxiety um when i go through that suffering how i learned obedience was putting my faith in god and relying on him for the solution I was letting, I was learning, and I still am. I was learning to let God be God and let me be the daughter in Christ and the human being and giving it to him. That was the obedience that I learned. Um, And I do that, you know, in every aspect of my life. I'm learning something through that suffering. So there is, a, like I said, a lesson in all of it. So, And it is. that That's how... Or why, I I was just thinking about what you were talking about, that's why fellowship is so important. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had this little piece 
for the fan in our car. You would turn the fan on and it sounded like a jackhammer in the car. And so Laura got the little piece. And I'm by no means a mechanic in any way, shape, or form. So Laura's right. And because my dad was a mechanic, right. <laughs> I'm looking at it. And I'm like, okay, I know what Dude. it is. I know it's four screws. <laughs> But I'm not sure what's going to happen when I drop it. So, you know, I want to fix it because my dad yeah. taught me so well. You know, usually I'll go to the mechanic with the problem and let them know every single time. That'd be true. Um, I diagnose our vehicles all the time, which yeah. is very helpful. But I don't know how to fix it, you know. But what made that so cool, just that situation, was that, was it brought up? You brought it up to, hey, if anyone knows how to fix this little part or something to the, I, you know, the church. I have no idea, to be honest with you. But we have a, a lady that goes to our church. Her husband's are a, like a brilliant mechanic. Um, and Laura drove out there to go get the part installed. And he, I think he had it done. How long did it take him to do it? Um, I walk up. He's totally busy. Garage is full. Um, I'm nervous. Here comes my anxiety. You know, I don't know her husband or what he looks like. And, um, you know, I'm not really sure how this works. I jump out of the car and I see a man and I said, are you Brandy's husband? And he said, yes, I am. And he said, you must be Miss Finkle. And Finkle. And I said, yes. And he walks right over. I'm in a parked spot. He doesn't ask me to move my car or nothing. He opens the passenger door. He gets to work right away. And I'm just in shock. I'm feeling bad. I'm like, oh, wow. He put everything off that he's doing. To just jump right to me. That's amazing. And I and I was just, you know, talking to him. Praise the Lord. If you need me to help you hold anything, just let me know. I'm here for <laughs> you. Thank you, God. I had just gotten off work. I had went in at 2 that morning. So, you know, we're talking 1130. I'm exhausted. I've been up already for probably 10 hours, uh, even though it's 930, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and he puts it in. He says, start it up. It turns on. Um, I said, praise the Lord. You know, every time something's fixed, it's just a, a load off your back. I went to give him money, and what? he said no. And I said, well, she's going to find it in her purse <laughs> if you don't take this money. And he... Yeah, we legitimately very, wanted to pay the man. Yeah, he very sternly said no. It wasn't her that told me not to. He said it was the church. And I took that very seriously. Yeah. And so I said, well, praise God. And then, um, anyway, we use that money toward the ministry and everything yeah. else. But. So it's not just about, like, the money or someone could fix your car for free. We weren't anticipating anybody yeah. to fix anything for free. We planned on paying for it. But, the, you know, the point is, is that someone would, would take the time out of their day knowing that this was a stressful situation for you and to contribute to your joy, to help you always rejoice. Mm -hmm. They just took care of it. It was just, yeah. like, no big deal. And it's such a blessing because it was one of the hottest summers we had. Oh, because man. it was the blower motor, the fan wasn't blowing at all. It just made so this horrible it noise. Yeah, well, you know, it stopped blowing at all in the end. Yeah. Remember? Oh yeah, it yeah, it wouldn't even turn up. on. Yeah, it seized up and it wouldn't even blow at all. So you're talking mm. about no fan, no hot air blowing, nothing, just saturated in sweat everywhere we went. It was bad. And you know, still trying to do ministry with that, and it was really, really hard. So. Anyway, God um, God fixes all things. He really does. Yeah, redeems. And it's whether or not, you know, we we believe it and put our faith in him and really let him do what he does best, which is be God, you know. Yeah. It's really amazing. Just And we hear the, you know, it's we hear it a lot, right? I mean, I I think we do. That it's not religion, it's relationship. Yeah. Well, I hey, I'm 100% could not agree more. But it's almost like saying marriage, it's not a certificate, it's a relationship. Well, we all know that. But do you really believe it, though? Do you really spend time with Jesus, with God, in prayer, seeking Him? Are we really seeking Him in every situation that we come across? Yeah. Or do we try to maybe fix it ourselves? If I don't need God right now, I don't want to bother Him. He's probably pretty busy. I don't think He has time to fix my car. And so... If we forget that and we focus, you know what? I'm going to seek God on everything. I really want the Lord. Mm -hmm. You will find joy that is unsurpassing. It will be the best thing that you've ever experienced because your focus will be on Jesus and God will bless that. 
honor me as you honor the Father, Jesus said. So we need to honor Jesus. We need to call out to him and to seek him out. I can't encourage that enough. Yeah, and what's funny, I will say this um, in my learning on how to rely on God for all things. Um, It seems like now the bigger stuff is, um, I don't want to say easier, but taller more tolerable i guess it's the little thing um what what what's happening now is the stuff that i think i got under control like you know driving in a crazy city where everybody's running red lights and whatever you know it's the little stuff i i catch myself being surprised that I, i'm not too giving that to the lord i'm taking it upon my flesh to get a little <laughs> upset sometimes in you hey, know that's all in them. driving so now you know see see how he's a teacher and he takes that and he says, no, don't, no, don't trust yourself when you think you're, you're all right there. Um, That's you right. know, keep, keep me in that too. Um, you know, it's not just in the big things, it's in all things. Amen. So, um, that is a, a good thing to think about. Yeah. And, um, you know, don't be surprised when trials come upon you. Um, we're not to just be, uh, blessed beyond measure in the physical we are blessed beyond measure in the spiritual. So yeah, it's not the prosperity gospel. Come and serve Jesus; you'll have that brand new God. Pick up your cross and walk. Yes, come die. Come That's what Jesus said. With yeah, Christ, come absolutely. Suffer, come endure with Christ. I mean, we're not being some kind of you know more whatever. No, but, and, um, but we're not the only ones. I mean, look at the life of early Christians. It wasn't mm-hmm. there was no prosperity gospel becoming yeah. a Christian back then. It was a death sentence. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I think it's good points, and I love that you just said that it's the little things, driving. It's the, it's the little Talking stuff. Talking to the kids, not trying not to get upset when they don't listen. And, yep. You know, or somebody <clears throat> talking about your clothes or, yeah. or you know, other, other things. Just don't, little don't stuff. let that get you, you yep. know. Because that's where it's, you know, it's the big stuff that we can sometimes see and say, wow, that is really tough. I have to deal with this situation. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's just those little irritating little pokes. It's like you have a giant shield, but then that mosquito can still come underneath and, you know, something this little. It's just a little irritating. And before long, all these little irritating things and just like, build oh, up inside you. And you lose your joy in Christ right. because the focus became off of him and on these little irritating things that bother me. Right. Focus on Jesus in all things. Yeah. All things. Yep. All right. Sounds good. All right. Is there anything else you want to well, not that I can think discuss? Of. I know we do have another video to make. Uh, I'm excited to make it yeah. about did the apostles call Jesus God? Uh, so we are going to be doing part two, but we just wanted to come in. And I think we just wanted to talk about Philippians 4.4. 4. We want to tell you that to focus on Jesus means that you will have a happy life. Not everything in life may go perfect for you, but you'll rejoice in knowing Jesus is there with you. Yeah, and sometimes when you're really close to the church body, there's a lot of things that are happening daily. Oh. There's daily prayer requests. There's daily people getting sick and yeah. bad diagnosis. And last night, you know, I heard of another a sister that was diagnosed with something very tragic. And, you know, there's um, people just sick. The children, surgeries, uh, family members passing away, children dying. Um, and we just wanted to come on here and share this with y'all because Ephesians 4, 9 says, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in Christ, practice these things, mm-hmm. that the God of peace would be with you. Yes. And so, you know, we have a lot going on in our life. We've come through some uh very tumultuous times um i'm still missing my daughter she's not home um she's still estranged from the family and we're in a lot of pain and suffering too and we just want y'all to know what we see in christ what we've heard and what we've know and that god is so good and he's so powerful and that and he saves you in a mighty way Amen. and it may not be the answer to your prayer right this second but in some way somehow you're going to see the answer that he gives you. And, 
you're going to have peace and it's going to be okay. And Christ is with you. Um, we just encourage the church and we love y'all so much. Yeah. And we love our viewers and we love, love you all. Many of y'all are suffering with yeah. family members stuck in the watchtower, uh, Leroy. It's hard. You know, uh, people that we're praying for every single day. So There's a couple that reached out to us, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Maybe we just give a quick shout out to them. And yeah. Tell them that we're thinking about them. Yeah, thank you for reaching out. Cut, try to do a video chat with them. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So. Focus on the Lord. Yeah. Keep him in your in your vision. And pray. And because pray. That's yeah. the number one thing that you can do. Pray, have faith, and then praise him. Praise him through it. That, um, that was a huge lesson for me coming back from kids camp. Um was praising the Lord because, you know, I have a lot of hurt in my life as a child and seeing all these beautiful kids who got so much going for them, mm -hmm. so much support um, and so much love in their family and grandparents that care for them. And then, you know, here I am thinking about <laughs> my childhood and I'm like, God just, he just gives me so much joy seeing all these other kids have it, you know, having something that maybe I didn't have and how I can truly appreciate it and recognize it. Like you guys are blessed and, you know, and help them see that. It's beautiful to be around children. It is. It just gives you joy. It makes me feel better every day. I'm so glad mm -hmm. that I'm around children as much as I am. And just yeah. to, to see their, their joyful nature, their playful nature. It always makes me smile. <clears throat> and like I can even young kids get stressed out. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking of that young boy mm -hmm. who came and he pulled me aside and he was crying. Yeah. And he said, I have to go to school and I'm, I'm bullied at school. You know how hard it is to hear a little beautiful young child to be afraid to go to school because he's going to get bullied. Yeah. And then we had another little boy that had anxiety. He was actually in our Sunday school class. And I guess just because things were um, new to him, he was crying. Yeah. Uh, about his clothes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, you know. I had, Yeah, I had forgotten about even that. Even the children, they have things that yeah. they go through. And, and you know, it's good to show them that Jesus is there with you and how Absolutely. that they can have Jesus with them. Yeah. So, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Children that's are awesome. beautiful. All right. Well, well, we love you guys. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> Sorry. God bless you. <laughs> we hope you all have a great day. Yes. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Laura and I just love... Uh, Making videos like this and just talking, just expressing ourselves. Dog's totally asleep. Dog's totally sleeping now. Praising the Lord. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's awake again. <laughs> All right. So God bless everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. And uh, Converse will see you. Converse time. wants to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> he just wanted mama. Oh. Wow. All right. God bless you guys. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>